Chronicles of a Death Foretold is a 1981 Spanish book by Colombian writer Gabriel García Márquez. The murder of three people in a small town puts a family apart, but this book is not a murder mystery. Everyone in the town knew what was going on, so the real mystery is not why or who is the killer, it's why the town allowed the murder to happen. The best they did was half-hearted efforts to stop or warn the victim. And today the victim is the Marvels, the town is Marvel Studios and the mystery is why. Everything regarding this movie just why. And as the book does, let's start by the end. The Marvels is a highly anticipated flop. Everyone inside and outside the town knows it. That became obvious when the teaser and the trailer debuted on YouTube, both of which have a negative like-dislike ratio. Now, recent estimations say the movie will gather around 75 to 80 million dollars at the box office opening weekend. That's 50% less than Captain Marvel, the sour, tasteless scream in the middle of the Avengers sandwich. Box Office Pro claims the movie will earn between 121 and 189 million dollars in the domestic box office. That's at least twice as much as what Blue Beetle earned. Can you spare a coin? But it's also way below the $426 million Captain Marvel did in the domestic box office. These numbers are also below Quantumania, a movie that costed $200 million and made $476 million worldwide. I should explain that marketing and distribution cost double or triple a movie's budget, so we can say with a 100% certainty that Quantumania lost money. The Marvels will do even worse because these numbers are at the level of Black Widow and Eternals, chic action flicks that debuted during the pandemic and went straight to DVD, I'm sorry, to Disney+. Plus. The upcoming movie has a reported budget of $200 million, but it has been delayed twice, it changed its name during production and the marketing started three years ago. But perhaps money is not what Marvel wants, they are after a message more than a half. What does it mean to be a woman in film? It's 2018, Marvel Studios head producer Kevin Feige famously said, blah 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 Marvel heroes, more than a half of which will be women in the future. We're in 2019, Captain Marvel debuted in February and every critic and their mamas praised it. Take it! Yes, yes! It also made more than a billion dollars and cemented the great message they wanted to share. Female power is powerful, or something equally childish. Just two months later, in April 2019, Endgame debuted and continued the trend. So it has this totally spontaneous scene. I absolutely love that girl. And after Endgame, we've had WandaVision, Loki, which was about Sylvie, Black Widow, Eternals, Hawkeye, which was about Girl Hawkeye, Moon Knight, which was about Scarlet Scarab, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which was about Wanda and America Chavez, Mrs. Marvel, Thor, Love and Thunder, which was about Jane's Mighty Thor, She-Hulk, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, which was about Janet and Cassandra Lang, Secret Invasion, which was about Gia, and Loki Season 2, which is still about Sylvie. Out of 70 movies, shows, or specials that have come out since Endgame, 10 feature a female protagonist, more than a half. Congratulations Kevin Feige, here's your bankruptcy statement as the Disney stock is in a downward trend that looks irreversible. Marvel's 33rd movie, The Marvels, will certainly not change this trend. Everyone in town knows the superhero genre is in its final years, and everyone in town knows that there's Boring. not a lot of people eager to see this film, this multi-headed flop. Yeah. The mighty Captain Marvel is, is too much to carry. And so We're now in July 2023. Disney CEO Bob Iger said Marvel shows were losing fan interest because the amount of shows and movies was deluding the audience. If this is the case, then the mystery of this chronicles of a failure foretold grows because you see the Marvels is putting Captain Marvel together with two characters from two different shows. One of these, Monica Rambeau, was a secondary character in WandaVision. She was tasked with stopping Wanda after she enslaved an entire town to live a personal fantasy, however she let her go because they'll never know what you sacrificed for them. The other character is Miss Marvel, the adaptation of a comic that has been either cancelled or rebooted 14 times. When the show debuted, the character was dead in the comics, but luckily for its 10 fans, Mrs. Marvel's actress Iman Bellani created and premiered the character's reboot in July 2023. She had a total of zero writing experience. Don't take this info lightly, as Mrs. Marvel's success in the comics means the show became the lowest watched piece of MCU content in Disney+. The final character is Captain Marvel, a much 
beloved manly girl who easily defeats his enemies, even an entire fleet, without ever changing her face. She was so beloved that Brie Larson doubted she would ever come back to the movie. How long will you play Captain Marvel for? I don't know. I don't know. Does anyone want me to do it again? She won an Oscar before Captain Marvel, but after Captain Marvel she has only done a few small movies and played a part in the latest Fast and Furious flick. Her career has gone down since joining the MCU. Even her role as Captain Marvel has been diminished with every subsequent cameo. In fact, recent reports from Bounding into comics say she didn't want to come back to play Captain Marvel on the Marvels. Additional rumors suspect she's eager to leave the role behind. Is that like a personal attack or something? It will be hard to leave behind all of the things she has said as a pseudo activist though. Am I saying that I hate white dudes? No, I'm not. She even had to open a YouTube channel to launder her image, but her magnificent attitude is not the only problem. See, I do all my stunts. I did, I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. Uh, and then... Tom, Tom Cruise over here? No, no, I'm gonna be the first me, not the next Tom Cruise. Thank Ooh. you very much. She's also portraying a failed Marvel Comics character. Carol Danvers has been rebooted or cancelled 12 times in the comics. It does not hold the record of the most cancelled or rebuilt character in Marvel Comics as that coveted award goes to Mrs. Marvel. But over the most recent cancellation of Carol Danvers' solo series occurred in June 2023, even though the character is present in the movies and it doesn't seem like she will make a comeback. You know how anime exists to sell manga? Well, the movies exist to bankrupt comics. Finally, we're in September 2023. Bob Iger claims he now wants to steer away Disney from the culture wars, according to industry analysts. But before that, I guess they needed to show that female power is powerful once again. You see, this is a great mystery. Because the Marvels is a recipe for disaster. Characters coming from unpopular shows that delude the audience. Check. Are characters coming from unpopular Marvel comics? Yes. Actresses with low public support and tolerance? Check. A storytelling that centers around political ideas and fits within Marvel's cultural war? Check. A generic trailer featuring bad CGI, bad action, a silly plot, bland acting, and uninteresting villains? Yes. And I'd add out of shape actresses doing action stunts, which results in poorly made action sequences? Of course. The result? An abysmal box office projection, money is lost forever, and an entire franchise many, including me, used to love keeps falling down the drain. So why did no one put a stop to this, and why did Marvel approve it in the first place? So is the Marvels guaranteed to fail? Yes. I don't hate white. That's it for Actually. now friends, thank you for watching. If you like what you saw and heard, please subscribe and hit the like button. Also tell me what you think, keep the comment section civilized. civilized.